spot inside this conference highway in Atlanta. We're seeing the shadow of the moon now moving across the face of the sun. And we're not going to have a total eclipse. Explain that. No, it's at, the, it's at the maximum. Right now, as a matter of fact, I believe, uh, yes, 1223. We're seeing the most of the eclipse right now. Now, we're about 15 miles north of uh, downtown Atlanta, where they'll maybe see a complete ring. We're not going to see the complete ring. The reason we're not, the moon is just a little too far away from the Earth right now to cover the entire sun. But it's covering, as you see, most of it, about 99.7% here in Atlanta. Now, there's been some talk about seeing a, a phenomenon known as Bailey's Beads, as the sun shone through the lunar valleys. It doesn't look as though we're getting to see that. At the uh, we would have already seen that if we were going to. I didn't see it myself. Right down in the southeast quadrant, I thought I could just see a glimpse of it. Perhaps downtown, where it's a little bit more complete. They, they would be able to see that. That's would, right. We are a little offline, but really not very much. Visibilities here in Atlanta are wonderfully good. Oh, it couldn't have been a better day. And I might point out that we are going to have some pictures here at the Weather Channel taken downtown, and they're going to be sent out here right away. And around 1 o'clock or so, I believe, we're going to show those. Bear in mind that we will not see total darkness. What we're seeing now in, in Atlanta and, and on the track of this uh, eclipse is, is kind of a twilight affair. It's not going to get very, very dark, but there's a possibility for the temperature to drop some 10 degrees, perhaps even more, John? We do expect it to drop, and we're going to check on that very carefully. We're past already the maximum phase, so it's been as dark in Atlanta as it's going to get. Now, in just a few minutes, uh, the maximum eclipse will be right around Greenville in South Carolina. In fact, it's coming up on that uh, in, in just a very few minutes, about 1228. So you folks up in northwestern South Carolina, you're going to see the maximum right away. And you've also got beautiful weather there, clear skies, good visibility just like it is here in Atlanta. That's true. Now, we might mention that the darkest shadow, which is called the umbra, is a cone shape, and it uh, will not actually touch the surface of the Earth. I think as close as it will get will be about 460 miles. It's right? about 460 miles. So if that cone had actually come all the way down to the Earth, it would, would have been darker. But mm -hmm. that's how much we lacked of having a total eclipse. You see, the moon orbits around the Earth, and not quite a circular orbit. It's, mm -hmm. an, uh, it's an ellipse or oval, so sometimes it's a little farther away than it is others, and right now it's just a bit too far away to cover the entire sun. So the moon, in essence, is not really big enough to conquer the sun completely. Not today. Yeah. Well, this is a remarkable experience. This is something most people only see once. It through these craters and mountains and gives a shimmering effect here on the surface of the Earth. There's also a, a, a diamond ring effect I've, uh, I've heard about. It. Just when it reaches its maximum right. point, or a little bit before. Right before and after. Uh, on the edges of the sun and also the corona is very nice to look at and that's not normally seen except during a period of an eclipse well you can see that it's it's, it's just mighty close barely a sliver we're about uh, a minute and 30 seconds away from the maximum point here and and as you said the people should watch for those Bailey's beads do they always appear on an annular eclipse uh, an annual eclipse and a total eclipse and uh, the excitement around here is just incredible. People are just ooing and eyeing. And uh, I also note the temperature has dropped considerably, about how, how? 10 to 12 degrees uh, wow. in the past 15 minutes because of the uh, radiation from the sun being cut off by the uh, moon. A lot of heads are craned towards the heavens right now. Uh, uh, I noticed a lot of people are watching through uh, various devices. Uh, we've got welder's glass. Right. Uh, that's safe, is it? Welder's glass is uh, safe, uh, shade number 14 or higher, to filter out the uh, damaging effects of the sun's rays. Also, uh, Clemson University was nice enough to set up a large Mylar screen. I think you saw that earlier. A lot of people are hovering under that. We've got a lot of amateur astronomer, astronomers out here with their telescopes filtered out. And uh, it's just an incredible event. It's really getting dark out here. We're uh, uh, 35 seconds away right now. 30 seconds. I don't know if they might want to come back out on a qu quick shot just to show you how dark it is out here. We're so close. Uh, it's it, it's really dramatic out here. Uh, everyone's everyone's very excited. Uh, very much like twilight, I guess. Yeah, that's right. Now it's really beginning to get dark. Yeah, we're uh, we're, we're down to the final ten sliver. seconds away. And the crowd's applauding. It's only going to last for about ten there seconds. There we are. There we are. That's it. That's there we go. It. The maximum point of annularity. Just a sliver of the sun showing through the mountains. I don't see any of the Bailey's beads. Is that one at the top of the screen there? Well, it's, it seems to have disappeared now. Now here we're coming back out of it. 
before you know it's over with. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the maximum part of the eclipse, as I understand, is just about six seconds long. You have to be really quick to be on top of this. Uh, also, I noticed the uh, uh, in Greenville, they still have it yet to come, don't they? Right, Greenville's about a minute or two behind us, so if you're watching in Greenville, you still have the chance to uh, take a peek at the uh, eclipse. Don't look at it directly, of course, but uh, it should be occurring there about a minute or two after uh, Clemson University. We're, we're getting a little more sun there. Uh, I have a guest with me, uh, Professor Tom Collins from the uh, Clemson University Astronomy Department. Physics and astronomy. F physics and astronomy. Uh, how does this uh, eclipse compare with uh, some of the other ones you may have noticed? I think it's great. Uh, the Bailey's beads effect was quite clearly shown. You know, little the roughness of the moon disk on the sun. And I think it was really a very, very nice uh, image that we got. Really very good. Uh, how rare was this eclipse, an annular eclipse? Annular e eclipses are pretty rare because the, uh, from the ellipticity of the orbits of the moon and the, sun, and the earth around the sun, the moon has to be in the right part of its orbit and the earth in the right part of its orbit so that the moon's disk is not large enough to cover the sun. And that doesn't happen very often. Is it less rare than a total eclipse? Yes. Yes. And I noticed the next time we're having a total eclipse is not for about 33 years. Uh, in this area. There are other total eclipses earlier, but not in this part of, of North America. As you can notice from our, our TV monitor, we're seeing a lot more of, this, uh, of the sun now. How, how long will it take till the sun is completely uncovered? It takes about uh, an hour and a half. The whole thing takes about three hours from first contact until the end of the eclipse. But, but the, you know, the, the part, the annular part of the eclipse, at best, in this part of the country is about nine seconds. Okay, well thank you so much, Professor Collins. A pleasure talking to you. Well, I guess uh, it's becoming a little lighter here, uh, Mike. Uh, it's an uh, hour and a half till we get complete lightness. That's right. It's about four minutes after two o'clock, the uh, moon will finally stop blocking the sun and the eclipse will be over with. We won't have another eclipse in this part of the United States until the year 2017. So we've witnessed something that is a rarity, indeed. <laughs> well, <laughs> enjoy then, and not, not another one for 33 years. Back to you now, Ken. All right, thank you, Kathy, and uh, we'll hold it here for just uh, another minute or two. The totality of the eclipse in uh, Greenville has just passed within about the past uh, 30, 40 seconds. The duration here was uh, about six seconds. And uh, to give you an idea of just how fast this eclipse is moving, in its, uh, in its totality anyway, in about another... 30 seconds it will be over Shelby, North Carolina as far as its uh, maximum annularity and will last there again for about 10 seconds and uh, it's moving as we said uh, progressing uh, north northeast at a speed of about 1400 miles an hour and will officially end at 2.30 this afternoon by then the uh, path will be over the shores of Morocco and uh, the sun will again be in full view the moon will have passed totally out of its path and we will be back to uh, full sunshine once again and if you've been outside and witnessed it you've noticed that uh, very strange uh, gray eeriness that of course caused as the uh, amount of sunlight decreased by the moon passing and of course we cannot emphasize the fact that if you are looking at the sun cannot emphasize enough how important it is that you keep your eyes protected at all times while looking at the sun so as to prevent those burning rays from doing any permanent damage to the retina of the eye. And uh, that's it for us today. We hope you have enjoyed our live coverage of the eclipse wherever you have been. If you have been able to step out and actually see it, if you've been far enough away where you couldn't witness it in its totality, we hope you have enjoyed our live coverage. By the way, the, the sighting of the eclipse is uh, all over the continental United States, though it's uh, maximum annularity only in that very brief path that is, in effect, paralleling Interstate 85 as it passes through this area. Uh, in Chicago, for those watching, they got to see about 70% of the maximum annularity, and it is far uh, as uh, Seattle, Washington. It was also visible, though only about 13% of it. So this is one of those rare occasions where we in this part of the South actually had the maximum and the best vantage point. So that's it for us today, and for those who may have missed it, we will, of course, recap the entire progress of today's eclipse tonight at 6. Thank you for being with us. I'm Ken Sparks. Have a good afternoon. We will pause now for a commercial, and then we will join Days of Our Lives, which is already in progress. <laughs>